Hey, Chloe. So um, you are a W Series driver. You've broken a world record. You've been on many shows. And I mean, you're basically a celebrity. Who inspired you to start racing? Uh, it was mainly my dad. Um, I guess he was always into racing. And so naturally, I grew up interested in it. In it and um, I grew up watching Formula One. And so I guess through watching Formula One and seeing my dad's interest and um, just being able to spend time around cars with him, that really kind of sparked my interest in motorsports. But it was, um, I saw some kids at a go-kart track one time. Uh, it was actually at, at VIR. My dad was there doing an autocross event um, or a track day event on the track. And they had like um, a, a temporary cart track there as well. And some, you know, there's some people out driving the carts and I was, I was only young. I was seven, I think at the time. And so I was standing there with my mom and I just asked her, I was like, well, I want to drive. And so, um, I guess that's kind of where the idea came from. My parents did some research and they found a karting track up in New York, um, where I live right now. And that's where I started racing. That's really cool. I kind of had a similar experience with that. Um, so something that I found with my dad being like my inspiration is he's, he's really hard on me because, you know, I'm his daughter and it's kind of like he sees, he sees himself through me. So was your dad ever hard on you? There was always like constructive criticism. It's never anything that wouldn't help me. Um, I mean, of course, there have been tougher times or we would get frustrated at things and it wouldn't be like a light, cheery kind of mood. So I think everybody should expect that. Um, it's not always going to be super fun and happy and you're not always going to have a lot of um, good times. It's ever, not everything is going to be a win. So, um, yeah, there's definitely some, I guess, darker times, but it's never been like anything too much that I couldn't handle. And it's always been, you know, it's always helped me in the long run. You know, whenever I, I make mistakes, which happens quite often because I'm, I'm decently new, um, you know, my dad will, he'll be straight up with me. He'll be like, wow, you're a knob, like you suck. And, but he also, he'll also tell me like how to get better, you know? Um, so a question I had was like, what kind of coaching style do you respond to best? Do you, do you embrace the, the hard criticism or would you rather him sugar-coated I guess I mean I don't think it should be sugar-coated too much I think you have to kind of learn um that more rough style of coaching because you're not ever gonna you're not always gonna have a coach that you particularly like or agree with and so you kind of have to just get used to people who you don't tend to really like I'm not saying like my dad's someone I don't like but um I guess I, I typically learn best when I have some sort of roughness to my coaching. I don't like a super duper nice coach who just tells me things that I did well and doesn't really give me anything else other than that. And that's kind of in anything that I do that's in like schoolwork and everything as well. And so I think uh, as long as you have a coach who just kind of goes over things with you so that you learn what you're doing wrong and how you can fix it for next time so that you don't make that same mistake again whatever kind of style that coach likes if you get along with them I think chemistry is a big part of it then um it, it'll end up working out either way so since your dad was your first coach right um and you've moved into W series so I assume you have other people who who coach you right yeah so in the um in the early days of carding I had my dad he coached me um when I, when I first started basically, and then I kind of moved into getting other coaches because it just kind of got to the point where my dad couldn't tell me anything more. Um, he never raced go-karts or anything. He kind of just did, um, just, he, he just had fun really with his cars. And so he taught me the basics and then I just kind of moved into other coaches. Was it easy to like, for me, like my dad, we have a dynamic, like when he says something, I know exactly what he means. And when I talk to other people, other coaches, they explain something and I'm not quite sure what it means because they just explained it differently. Um, do you have that problem? Like, or do you find it easy communicating with everybody? You just know exactly what they mean. I mean, with my dad, obviously we have a different kind of bond. Like he, he will know what I'm thinking without me saying anything. And so I guess in, in it's kind of works the same way with uh, how I respond to his 
coaching or just kind of in general, just how I respond to whatever he's doing with other coaches. Um, you kind of just have to learn how to adapt to different coaching styles. And I mean, as, as you spend more time with one coach, you'll naturally get more comfortable with them. So, um, I mean, I think when I first started out, I did not really have the ability to get along with every coach and just, I mean, I I never really learned how to deal with coaches that I didn't like. Um, and so I think that's something that I've picked up on now, but, um, no, I mean, at the beginning, I didn't really get along with everyone super easily. I was naturally pretty introverted. And so that was just in general, kind of difficult for me. I, I also was introverted. I think carding just like brought me out of my shell. Um, but as I got better, me and my dad, we started, we started having more in-depth conversations about like mind, body, soul. Cause when you're out there shredding on the track, you know, like it's, it's, you get into something, it's like the zone and we practice, you know, practice doing something every day for your mind, your body and soul so that it can, it's like a round ball, right? You have to have each one to have your life flow smoothly. And especially like racing, if you want to get into the zone and be like the champion, because not everybody talks about that. So my question for you is, what do you do? Do you agree with that? Like, do you have something that you do every day that feeds your mind, body and soul? I mean, I, I never really had something super structured like that. It was, I think just having that kind of like balance was pretty natural for me. Um, I know there are definitely things that I had to work on more than others. Um, I mean, I, I used to have to work on like interviewing and all of that with my dad, we would go outside and he would like pretend like he was interviewing me and I would have to answer his questions. But um it was more just specific things like that. Like, I mean, the driving part, that's stuff that you can really only fix while you're at the track driving. Other things, um, such as the interviewing thing, that was a big one for me, um, that you you can work on that pretty much anywhere. And so I guess, um, I guess just from, for, for what you said, having something, uh, having like a time where you would work on those three things, I never really had anything specifically for that I guess it just kind of came naturally to me do you have a personal trainer that you go to or like a specific workout routine that helps you stay in shape for when you're driving um I don't have a personal trainer no um I I've done everything on my own um basically for the entire time that I've been racing I mean initially when I first started um I, I I was a competitive swimmer for a really long time before I started racing and so then um, I just kept up with that up until now. Um, and so I think that's, that's, that, that's pretty good for when you're in like go-karts and entry level formula cars. But once you start doing races in cars, um, like once you start getting past formula four, I would say, um, and you're doing longer races, like what the W series does, um, especially in the heat and everything, you have to definitely be in shape. Um, I guess, what I do is I spend a lot of time at home lifting. Um, I think that you kind of have to find something that you like doing. Um, I like, I enjoy swimming a lot, uh, but that that's, you know, it, it's like you have to go to the pool and then you have to, you know, then you have a two hour workout and then you have to drive back home from the pool. And especially during COVID, a lot of pools are closed. And so um, that was, that made it a lot harder to actually go out and swim every day. And so um, I started just buying some stuff for my home gym. And I think that, I mean, it's been working so far. So um, <laughs> I guess, I guess, um, yeah, I, I would just recommend uh, finding things that you like to do. Uh, I, I assume you have a simulator, right? I do. Yeah. Um, what games do you play on it? Like what, what um, are realistic that really actually help on the racetrack? Yeah, I mean, for me, I like to use um, either R Factor, maybe iRacing. Um, R Factor has a car closer to what I am driving in the W Series, and um, iRacing has some cars that are kind of outdated, and so that's where the only real problem comes in. But iRacing has really good track models. R Factor has um, a closer car model to what I'm driving in real life. 
Um, the only thing with simulator training that I don't quite like as much is that it's never really going to be as accurate um, as it as it is in real life, um, especially for this year. Um, we're racing at F1 circuits on F1 weekends. And so basically on that F1 weekend, the track is as good as it could be all year. They have everything set up completely different. Like all the banners on the side of the track are different. So that can kind of play with you a little bit. Even the brake markers and everything, sometimes those can be in different places. Um, like they, they might not be in the game or uh, where, that, where, where they will be there in real life. And so there's just small things like that, but I use it mainly to help me learn the tracks before I go to them because I've never been to any of the tracks this year except for Coda. So um, for that, I think it's very useful. So I find like, like I'll practice on the F1 thing because it's like super focused or like it's super mental and you have to focus a lot. So it helps me on the track. Um, do you find that like, like driving on a simulator like helps your, your mental game to like sharpen your skills and stay focused? I think there are definitely certain, I guess, exercises that you can do that'll help you mentally on track. Um, there, there, the only thing with the simulator, again, is that you don't have any of the outside forces. And I think having those in real life can play a lot into how you are mentally as well, because you might start to think to yourself like, oh, I'm tired now, or like, oh, this is a corner I'm coming up to. And it's, I have to like be prepared almost. And so I think, for the simulator, like there are just I, a lot of it is visual exercises that I do, which help in real life. So, um, for example, there's one where you take like a piece of cardboard from a box or something and you put it basically right where the middle of the screen is, but you leave like a little bit of space at the top, a little bit of space at the bottom and the sides. And so that's it's almost like you have to have the track memorized um, oh. and you can only see out like the sides. Uh, out of like your peripheral vision and so that it's to train your peripheral vision and also it kind of puts you in this scenario of oh if your visor gets fogged or something and you can't see out the center um you're you're prepared when you when it happens in real life or if it happens in real life oh that's that's pretty interesting um i've seen things where like drivers um like they'll balance on a ball and they'll like tap there's like dots on the wall and you're like we're mm -hmm. walking times and stuff, right? Have you, do you do any of those? Does that, does that actually help? I guess. Um, I don't do that. Um, at home, it's kind of hard to get like one of those light boards. They're a lot of money. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I can do. I'm moving in, in about two weeks. And so in the new house, I'll see what I can do about that kind of stuff. But, um, I, I don't, Things like that, like reaction time and all of that, I don't purposely train for that. I think a lot of that comes from swimming. Um, you know, when you, when you start a swimming race, you have to listen or, or I mean, there's a little trick, but it kind of goes a little bit too in depth with all of that. But um, you have to listen and you have to kind of react in that moment and you don't know when you're going to start, basically. So it's kind of like doing a standing start. You have to be ready for it. And um, in swimming, you use your peripheral vision a lot to see where everybody is. So I think just things like that I've kind of picked up on through the years and I've built it up. And um, I, I think once I move, I'm moving to Fort Wayne, Indiana. So I'll be about two hours from Indianapolis. And so um, I'm looking at pit fit and everything to see what I can do there. Well, I recently got a Miata and I did my first race and I was the most nervous that I've ever been. Like I just, you know, haven't driven a car like in a race before. It's just really different for me. I mean, you've done a lot of races, obviously. So how do you handle your nerves before? Like those, the, the butterflies you get right before a race. You know, I'm like the worst person to ask about this because I don't know what I do. I, I, I just, I don't really have too many nerves that it gets in the way of things. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I wouldn't call them nerves. I would just call it excitement. Like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, um, just really excited to start the race basically but um I don't really know I mean I've done enough races at this point that I I don't really think like nerves are they, they they're not it's not like new kind of like oh I'm going into this new kind of experience I don't really know what to expect nerves I don't get really get those as much anymore um 
And then even when I was little, it was always just like, I was always just really excited. And I never, I think a lot of that is I just never thought about like, oh, this could go wrong. That could go wrong. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, um, I don't know, I couldn't give you any advice. I think it's just something that you have to just find something for yourself. And, um, I think I know a lot of people like music and I don't know, I'd say give that a try. <laughs> I see a lot of people walking around with like AirPods before a race, like to just get in the zone, I guess. I don't know. So I've watched some of your previous interviews just to like learn about you. And I realized that we have the common, our goal is F1, right? You want to, that's your ultimate goal, mm -hmm. F1. So, yeah. so you started on karting. That's where I started out, right? And, and you're in W Series. Like, that's awesome to me. That's where I want to be because you race alongside F1, like, that's amazing. So like, what's your plan? Like, how do you plan to get to F1? Like, do you have a ladder system? I mean, naturally there is a ladder system. Um, I think once W series kind of came into the equation that that was like a huge thing for me um, when it was announced in 2018. Um, and then they had their first season in 2019 from then, um, from when it was announced, basically, I had uh, kind of set my sights on W Series because I knew that would give me a really good opportunity to get some good time in a in a car that could move me up. And, and um, of course, you know, racing alongside Formula One, I could be right in front of that audience. Um, FIAF3, FIAF2, they run with some of the um, at some of the same races that we run at as well. And so they'll get to see us. And um I mean, I think W Series is just a really good place to develop as well. Um, you, uh, all the cars are pretty much exactly the same. There's only some small setup changes that you can make. Um, the engineers are rotated so that nobody can say, oh, well, this engineer is better than that one. And um, I think as well, the environment that, w, that the W Series has is um just different from everything else I mean obviously it's all female but the drivers spend time with each other so we know each other I think just overall for for an entry-level series um moving up from F4 an entry-level series which is an entry-level formula car series um I should prevail especially for me so what's next after W series do you plan to like do this for a few more years or our sponsors looking at you and they're gonna like say, oh, we wanna take her and put her to the next level. Like how does, what's your plan? Well, right now um, it looks like if I do good in this year and then I get invited to W Series again next year, I'll do that. And then after that, we'll see what happens. Um, we, I can go to FIAF3 or I could even come back into the States and start doing road to Indy races and then see what, what happens with that as well. Um, and um, I mean, obviously the goal is Formula One, but as I've said before, IndyCar has also been um, in my, like, I guess on my bucket list of races that I've wanted to do, I've wanted to do the Indy 500. Um, and I think IndyCar as well, being in, being the top American open wheel uh, a series is a good place to go as well. I mean, I'm open to almost anything. I mean, I'm open to like IMSA or, um, and then, uh, you know, I can do just, so I, you know, I, I'm open to racing pretty much whatever comes along, but, um, to get into formula one, I would say after W series, it's either FIAF three or FIAF two. So with your, your teams, you're, you're with Jenna racing. So there's like, it's just like formula one, there's two drivers per team, correct? Yeah. So how did you, how did you get, like, did, did they find you and, and be like, Hey, come be a driver for us? Or how did you get recruited? First you get into the W series. That's pretty much the first thing that has to happen. Um, so the teams in W series are, they're not like formula one teams where they develop their own car or they have their own engine manufacturers. It's all this, like in W series, it's all the same car, same engine. It's all, basically managed by the same group of people and so each team doesn't have like different components than the other but um I mean I I went through all those tests with W series at the beginning of the year and um it's it's kind of like some of the some of the 
comms team from the W series and then the team owners kind of, you know, coordinate on who they want on their team. And Jenner is the only American team in W series this year. And so um, I think just naturally that would, that was the right fit. And so there wasn't much thought that had to go into it. I don't think at least <laughs> not from me. Um, I was expecting myself to be on Jenner anyways. And so um, I think, I think that's how it's done. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but that's what I was told. So your teammate is Jamie Chadwick, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she's been winning a lot. So I was really curious about this because I don't know, like, what's your team dynamic? Are, do you guys see each other as competition or are you more like supportive and you, you help each other? I would say off track, you all are pretty friendly with each other. You'll talk to each other. Um, obviously, you're not going to like become best friends with each other so that you don't race each other on track. You'll get you'll 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 still race each other on track just as hard. And um, I think. I think off track, you all are courteous to each other. Um, there's really no I, drama, I would say, um, off track, um, on track. You, yeah, I mean, it's the same as carding. What I thought, what I, what I was kind of going through in carding, I would be nice to everybody off track. Um, if I needed to speak to somebody, I would, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but on track, that's when you see everybody as your competition. As it doesn't really matter who it is. Has there have you ever been like in a situation where like there's been penalties and the race directors have had to make like a tough call and you were in the middle of it? Or because I've watched some of the races and I mean there is I've seen some of the crashes and just like complications. Have you ever been in, in like a situation like that? In Miami, I did get a penalty in the first race for just, it, it wasn't a racing incident. I didn't hit anybody or anything, but it was just, um, something small with the rules, um, on the, on the formation lap. But, uh, I have not been in anything where I've taken a driver out and gotten a penalty for it or anything. I know it has happened already this year. Um, but I mean, with the FIA and the way that they do things, it's, very um organized and formal and um i mean yeah it, it's it's it, i think it's pretty well run with the officiating and everything i know you said you're not like best friends with them but do you guys ever um hang out outside of racing like go to team dinners or do activities outside the race floor it's difficult to do that all the time because everybody is kind of spread out from each other um but before Miami and at, right after the test in Barcelona, um, we, uh, I went out to LA to go meet Caitlin and Sophia before the first race and Jamie came out as well. And so I, I guess we, we all kind of got to spend a day together, meet Caitlin and Sophia and do all the things before we actually had to be at the racetrack and perform. It's just to take some pressure off, but um, I mean, after a race weekend, W Series will hold like a like a dinner or something, and so we'll all get to see each other after on Sunday evening. So, so um, I mean, sometimes W Series organizes like small things for each team, but uh, I think it's more difficult with me being in the states as well as Caitlin, and then Jamie being in the UK. So just just general travel things like that make it a little bit more difficult for our team to do that. So you guys have traveled like to many tracks and around the world, I guess. What's your favorite, what's your favorite track and like the environment around it? Like what, what's your the place you enjoyed the most? Just I have only been to Miami and Barcelona with the W series. So um, I did enjoy Miami a lot. Just, it, I mean, it, it was, it's a new track where some of the first people to have been on it. And it's in the States. It's not a very far travel for me. <laughs> and um, I think just the way that they had put that on, that whole event on is just super crazy. And it was, it, it was honestly more like a party than a Formula One race. But that, I think that was pretty cool though, still. Um, just in general, the way that the facility was. And um, I mean, 
yeah, I mean, just, uh, <laughs> it was just a pretty fun time for me. Besides taking interviews from, you know, people like me, like, you know, small, small drivers, how do you plan on setting yourself apart from, from other, other drivers, like other female drivers? Because obviously we have an advantage against literally like everyone else in motorsports because there's not many females. So how do you plan to set yourself apart? I think a lot of it is being able to have your own personality um, in interviews. So it, it's almost like in Formula One, you know, how a lot of people like Daniel Ricardo because he jokes around a lot. <laughs> it's like being able to do things like that and also get the results as well. That I think those two things can bring a lot of attention to oneself just by being yourself is really how you can differentiate yourself. And that's not just from other female drivers, that's from everybody yeah. in general. Like, do you, do you put a lot of focus on your social media? Like, like what you said, being yourself and making it look authentic? Yeah, I, social media, definitely you want to be yourself. Um, I mean, if people see you on social media and then they meet you in real, in real life, um, do you want it to be basically the same person you want it to be so that it's almost like they know you right and so um definitely on your social media just um be the most honest you can be I guess okay so my last question for you so my goal is you know make it as high as possible in the motorsports ladder and you know be as seen as possible so that you get the most opportunities so what is your advice to carters who want to make it up to your level of racing? I'd say definitely have a plan to get there. Um, like, even if that plan has to change, which mine has changed a lot, um, at least have, I guess, a starting point um, and have, have a general plan of which, which steps you need to take, which steps you want to take. And then... Um, as your plan changes, you know, that that's fine if it changes. Um, I also say to make sure you spend time to learn about things outside of just driving. Like um, I, a big one for me is learn how to read data. Um, and, you know, I, I think read, being able to read data is one of the most useful things um, I've ever learned in racing. I think from the data, you can just tell so much. Like if I come in and I tell my engineer, oh, the car is, is under steering, but then in my data, it shows that I let off the brake too early. Then, then I, I know, oh, it's me, not necessarily the car. Yeah. And also being able to ask your engineers those kinds of questions. And I ju just knowing what questions to ask is um, the most useful thing for me probably. So you said that um, your journey to from karting to where you are now changed a lot. So what do you, what do you mean by that? Like, did you have a plan and it didn't go go like how you thought? Yeah. So originally, my plan was I was going to do karting in twenty, and then in twenty twenty, I would move into to F sixteen hundred or Formula Ford, and then do that for a year, and then hopefully get noticed by the W series to do that in twenty twenty one or 2022, depending on however many years I stayed in F1600. But um, with COVID, of course, that changed. And um, so in 2020, I ended up doing carts again for another year. Um, very limited races, but just enough, I guess, to kind of, um, I, I did enough to keep me fresh for the next year. And also um, I, 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 I did some bigger races, but not not too many big races that we would run out of money so that kind of stuff and then in 2021 um there was a team going into picked me up and wanted me to race for them and so um you know I took that and I did formula four for a year and then the w series came it came along at the beginning of this year late last year beginning of this year and um now I'm in the W series. So, I mean, <laughs> I, the plan, the plan originally worked out the way that I had planned it to almost, um, with a few changes in there, but I got to where I wanted to be. And so, um, I guess in the end it worked out is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So I know 
know I said that was my last question, but as you're talking, I was curious because so obviously carding is like very expensive, um, especially when you start out. So did you ever get did you ever pick up any sponsors like to help you move from carding to Formula Four? Like, did you ever have sponsors to help with the cost? Yeah, my team when I did Formula Four actually paid for uh, my seat in Formula Four. So um, that was like the big sponsor for that. I mean, I had I had um, some other sponsors, not not necessarily monetary sponsors, but MIR sponsors me. They do race suits, gloves, boots, um, all of that. And so I got uh, I get some custom suits and everything and. Um, this year I have a sponsor called Monoflow who, um, helps to pay for testing budget for in conjunction with W series. And then, um, they also, uh, the, the owner of it, he owns a Porsche GT4 club sport. And so when I'm free, I get to go and do some of those endurance races, um, to get some of that sports car experience. And so, um, yeah, that, that's been my big sponsor for this year. Um, and then, of course, obviously, with the W Series, all of that is, is free to enter. And so, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, this year has been going pretty well. Um, and so with the help of those two, um, this year has been, it, it looks like it's going to be a really good year. I mean, it's just started, so. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um so another question, I, when, when you're talking, I brought it up. Um, so with the Porsche, with your Guinness world record, how, how did you even get into that situation? Like how did, did Porsche see you and was like, oh my gosh, we have, to, we have to get her in our car and see if she can do this? Well, it was actually the production company, um, you know, the YouTube video that they have on their, uh, on Porsche's YouTube. The production company that made that video had, emailed uh me and so they had told us like oh we want to do this thing with a with a german car manufacturer they didn't even tell us who it was but they were like we want to do this thing with a german car manufacturer um it has a lot of potential to be big and it, it'll be a really good opportunity like if you want to know more then contact us back and so of course we contacted them back <laughs> and so um it turned out to be Porsche. And then um, they had come up with the idea to do the world record. They knew what they wanted it to be. And so that, so they told us what, it, what all of that was. And um, I mean, they, they did all the logistics for it. They rented out the runway um, because you need a runway to do it on. And um, they had everything set up so, so well. And um, yeah, I, it, it was mainly Portia that did everything. That's cool. Did you feel, did you feel like, wow, I'm like, I mean, obviously you broke a world record. That's pretty cool. Like, how do you feel? I guess in the moment it had been a long day. And so in the video, you can probably tell I was relieved when it was, <laughs> when I knew that I had done it. Like that world record is so tedious. It's like, you cannot even lay a tire on one of those cones if the cone even moves outside of the boxes that they drew for them then the then it basically it doesn't count and so um I mean just it was a hot day in August it was so <laughs> I mean I was sitting in that car for hours um because we had to wait for the right time we had to wait until like the clouds moved under the sun so that we could get some uh, so the track temperature would go down or, or I guess the runway temperature <laughs> would go down. Um, and it, I mean, that, that whole thing was just heavily decided on the weather. If it rained, obviously you couldn't do it. And then um, with the temperature, if it got too hot, if the sun was on the surface for too long, it would get too hot. It's almost like in go-karting when, when the track gets really hot in the afternoons, it gets slower. And so that it, it was just a whole waiting game and just waiting for the right time. And then if you blew it that time, then you didn't get another chance for like 30 minutes. And so, um, I mean, I was just generally relieved, but I guess now after I've done it, it's, it's just something that's pretty cool for me to tell my friends, like, cause I mean, 
you don't really find a lot of friends who have a world record like you do. <laughs> so, so they, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, my friends enjoy hearing about it and, um, my teachers did too. That was a big one. <laughs> So, so does your whole school know you as like the racer? I think pretty much my entire school knows um, that I'm the race car driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at school, like, I'll talk about my racing stuff with my teachers and classmates and they're all, they're all like pretty fascinated with it and like, wow, that's so cool. And like, you know, so yeah, yeah, that's, have you found any um, like similarities that you can take from karting that helped you? like move up progress in your motorsports career definitely race craft karting i think has has the the closest racing um than you'll than any kind of car you'll drive um it's obviously a lot higher paced than go-karts and so like you go from a go-kart and then you start driving a formula four car and you're like man this is slow like <laughs> what's going on but it's just, it's just kind of perspective wise. Um, the formula four car feels a lot slower because you're on a big track meant for cars that'll go a lot faster, but that car is very, a lot slower than like a formula one car. It's a lot smaller, but, um, go-karting is definitely very physical as well in a different way than a car is, but, um, it, you know, it keeps your reflexes up. It kind of, go-karting is just a good training tool in general for, keeping yourself sharp for the next race yeah so so in a in a in your cars right it's like open wheel um and karting obviously you have like side pods and it's not as easy to to make contact and flip and do all that so so are, are you like you said you use your peripherals right because you do the practice and swimming mm -hmm. do you ever get nervous around like driving really close to people like hitting wheels or tires possibly like I mean I don't really think about like what could go wrong like oh this could happen that could happen like <laughs> if, if I have to race somebody hard and I have to get close to them I guess it's just something that I do like I don't really think twice about it so I had a I had like a crash in NOLA it was kind of a freak accident um, my front tire went into another guy's tire and I literally like flipped three times in the air. I didn't flip over, but it was like, like flipping. Yeah. And um, I landed and like kind of blacked out for a minute. But I think like ever since then, like I have a little bit of PTSD, like just racing super close with people. So yeah. I don't know, like, and like what you said is like, just don't even think about what bad could go happen, like, or what bad could go wrong. Um, I think that's good advice. But yeah, <laughs> have you ever had like a traumatic incident kind of like that or like a crash or something that like kind of set you back and you were like, whoa, I gotta, I gotta go back to the mindset I was at before this happened. I've never had that happen to me. I mean, I've, I've obviously been in a lot of wrecks and I've, um, I've been in um, I've, I've, I've never flipped a go-kart for somehow. I don't actually know how that's never happened to me, but with the amount of times that I've been in the air, but, um, I mean, I guess one, if, if something happens and I'm in an incident, I come back and I, I don't really dwell on it for too long. Um, I guess I've just never really, <laughs> I've never really thought too much of it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. It's definitely good. Um, I mean, I went on to win races after that, but I still, it's like just a little bit. I'm like, okay, I gotta be a little extra, just a little careful. But, um, mm -hmm. so on the Dave Letterman show, you guys got in your carts in Ocala and, and you, you basically, you know, you lapped him, right? Mm -hmm. I, I watched, that was pretty funny. <laughs> he spun out and so did he bend an axle? Yeah, he did. I saw the guys like hammering. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah it was a brand new cart and so he went out and um I yeah he just backed into a barrier and bent the axle and that was completely unscripted and um I mean the whole thing was unscripted um but I think that's pretty funny that they kept it in there too <laughs> yeah did you actually get to meet Lewis I did not oh. yeah I'm trying to meet him at one of these races this year wow. I mean I'll be I'll be at I'll be at um the f1 races with with w series and so 
trying I'm trying to meet him. <laughs> so he's your favorite or do you have another one? I mean he was he was kind of always my favorite growing up. Like when I was little, um I always like told my dad, oh that one's my favorite. Um I mean, my reasoning was uh, I, I liked his helmet because it was really bright and like the the McLaren livery as well was um, it was like all chrome. And so I was like, oh, I like that one. So but I mean, I, I, I just stuck with it through the years and um, turns out he's probably statistically one of the best drivers. And so <laughs> it, 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 I guess I picked a good favorite. Wow. So uh, at your your like at your races with Doug Series, do you get to actually interact with the F1 drivers or is it like hard, they're hard to reach? Cause I mean, obviously they're racing. Well, not, not really. Um, they're in a separate paddock and you need a different pass to get into that one. We're kind of, we're, we're in a different area than they are. They're like in the main area, they have the garages and all of that. Um, the only time where we can really get like, where we're like as close as we'll be is, like during our sessions and when we come into pit lane we use um their pit lane we don't use their garages or anything but we're we're right outside of their garages um and obviously we have the f1 fans there too so it's the same fans watching them watching us um but no we don't really see many of the drivers i mean in miami gunther steiner came over to the w series paddock and um met some of us but yeah, I mean, other than that, not not much really happens unless it's organized. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, do you feel pressure? Because I mean, obviously, you have a lot of people watching you. Like, do you feel the pressure of like all the people in the stands, or just not really? I mean, when you're racing or when you're driving in general, it's kind of hard to even think about like oh there's all these people watching me like there's not a lot of time to worry <laughs> like you're you're so like focused on what you're doing and um you have to remain that way as well um that it's almost like it's just kind of you and whoever else you're racing against it's you don't really tend to think about the fans too much i mean obviously when the race is over and everything we're doing our cool down lap like you know, then you're like, wow, like, this is pretty cool. There's a lot of people here watching. They're going to be watching Formula One. Now they're watching us. And um, I mean, I've never raced in anything that had as many spectators as a Formula One race will and or Formula One race does. And so um, to me, it's pretty cool to see that we have the same people, um, the same fans from Formula One watching us. Yeah. So, uh your dad is he like has he has he like supported you through all of this like is he super stoked for you being in you know obviously like you're kind of a celebrity so like what is what does he think about that I mean of course my dad is supportive of it um he throughout carding he was always my mechanic and so I mean I get that's that's he's always been super close to the action, um, been a part of it in karting. Uh, and then this year he's coming with me to all the W series races. And so, I mean, he, he, he enjoys racing. I mean, he loves racing. And so, um, it's just something that we share interest in and, uh, we enjoy doing it together as well. And so, um, I, I, I enjoy having him at whatever races he can come to, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, those are, that's pretty much all my questions. Pretty, all right. It's pretty cool talking to you. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you for uh, agreeing to do this. Yeah, no problem. Do you have any advice for, for me, for any, anyone who might watch this? Um. I think similar to what I said earlier, I, I always say this on like whenever somebody asks that kind of question, I always say that um, if you if you really want this, then you're going to have to work hard for this. Um, it doesn't necessarily only mean racing, like if you find an interest in another sport, um, you just have to know that you're going to have to work really hard to get good at it and um, just learn everything you can like don't don't 
I would say don't kind of push off like learning this or that because you want to focus on one thing. I think if you can um, just take the time to learn outside of the car, not just inside of the car, like learn about business stuff, like how to market yourself. I, that's that's like 90% of your time, only 10% of the time you're driving. Um, the rest of the time you're out of the car having to find sponsors and all of that, which obviously is really important in racing. <laughs> and so, um, I mean, I, I learned how to market myself and do all of that when I was younger. And so that's um, definitely been a big part of just racing in general. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>